All right. Good morning, Bistro fans. Jill here. I am here with a very special guest today. We have Brian Neiman, who is part of the Fram family pet food. And uh, Brian is the brand director, but he's been obviously very involved with the family business. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so if you could just start a little bit telling us your role in the company, your name, your role in the company, and I'm sure you have pets at home and who they are. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my name's Brian. It's my family business. So I, I grew up in this. Um, I've, I started out working, let's see, I, my first job I remember at Fromm was probably, probably maybe 10 years old, nine years old. I got paid to put stickers on export bags. <laughs> so we, our bags were all in English at the time and uh, put on a German sticker, said what the product was, and we get paid per sticker. It was, I think it was a fraction of a penny or something like that. Perfect job. Uh, yeah. And then I uh, started cutting the lawn, uh, <laughs> taking care of the grounds. That was kind of more in my uh, probably 12 years old, 13 years old uh, in high school. I, uh, I wasn't too fond of a memory because I remember it's summer vacation for high school and my dad said, you're going to work at the plant and oh by the way i need you there by 5 a.m uh you're going to be stacking bags so it actually gets quite warm here in wisconsin in the summer so it's pretty hot and big dog food bags for a mm -hmm. for a 15 16 year old um but i it built character right so i uh, did that for a while and then in uh college um i I'm, i uh, actually taught myself web design as a kid and my dad gave me a swing at the website once I started studying it professionally. So while I was going to college, I started to take over the website. And on weekends, I did store demos. So I worked at um, different stores around the Madison, Wisconsin area uh, while I was going to school. And by the end of uh, school there, I had a team of demo people that we'd go out and we'd do store demos. And that's when I really started to learn the family history and really what type of impact we we're making on the lives of uh, not only pets, but these small businesses that were in that area at the time and still are. So it really started to to hit home for me and show that the the family business really was doing a lot of good uh, out in the community and and helping pets. Uh, That's today, awesome. Yeah. So Great today, <laughs> yeah, today I still take care of our website. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a hand at uh, helping develop some products uh, with my dad over the years. Uh, I I did packaging from about two thousand five. Uh, so just a couple years ago, I still help out there a little bit, but um, I've got a great team that uh, kind of heads that up now. Uh, my day to day is a lot of uh, 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 advertising, um, digital advertising on mm -hmm. things like Facebook, YouTube, Google, uh, just driving uh, new new pet parents to uh, our website and to neighborhood neighborhood retailers. There's been a huge push to e-commerce. Um, so we want to make sure people don't forget about their local communities and they can, they, we want to let them know they can shop local and there's a lot of ways they can do that online and learn about products, uh, yet support local businesses. Fun, fun. So a small fun fact, I actually have an art and design, uh, advertising background Very that cool. for that before I ended up here in the, in the pet space. Um, so, of course, very appreciative of the full line of colors and <laughs> very easy to acknowledge what the package is. And um, I think that makes it great for a shopping experience for most people that are new to the brand as well. So yeah. we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, my dad comes up with a lot of crazy names. If anyone's if you're I don't know if you people who are watching are familiar with us or not, but we have products like Haas and Duck and Pfeffer and Z Lambda and Beef Livatini Veg. And yeah. um, we have we have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, those names stick. So fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. So um, if you could tell us a little bit more about Fromm's itself, like overall how the company got started, background. Um, I know, like you said, it's been multi-family generationally mm -hmm. for several years, your fifth generation. So um, if you could tell us a little bit about the background. Sure. Well, I, we could sit here for hours to talk about it. Uh, I don't know if you want to, if you can share my screen here. Yep, we got uh, it. Okay, so this is the the spaghetti of the family business. Um, so I, uh, as you said, I'm Brian Neiman. So I, why am I talking to you about from family pet food? Well, we go back uh, five generations with the family business. Um, if we go back to kind of the beginning where the Neimans and Fromms came into play. So both the Neimans and Fromms came over from Germany in 18... 52 and 1853. Uh, right here are all the people that have been in the United States since the immigration. Uh, so Johann, Joachim, and Johann II were all on the boat on the Neiman side and on the Fromm side 
uh, was Johan and, and um, his wife at the time. Anyway, they both had their, their first generation of kids here. And you'll notice kind of in this, this uh, family tree, there was a Neiman from marriage on both sides. So Sophia from married uh, Johan Neiman II and Elvina Neiman married Frederick from. Uh, so that's where the, the last name kind of comes in, but then there's, uh, it kind of intertwines itself uh, throughout history. Uh, Elvina and Frederick Fromm had four kids, Walter, Edward, John, and Henry. Uh, actually, they had 11 kids, nine reached maturity, uh, two died as, died as infants. But the four Fromm brothers uh, uh, had this dream of having a silver fox farm, and they would become the world's largest fox farm. Um, by the uh, 19, late 1920s. Uh, they also were the first people in North America to cultivate ginseng. And they, uh, mm -hmm. in not too much time, also became North America's largest exporter of ginseng. Uh, and no, we're, not, no, we're no longer in foxes or ginseng at all anymore. We've been out of it since um, 60s, 70s. Um, but uh, even today, uh, Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, where our original family farm is, accounts for 95% of North America's total ginseng export uh, today. Wow. So there's lasting effects of that. <laughs> um, uh, but John F. Neiman, the one that the one, the one is on over here, that is, we consider him the first generation of our family business. Uh, so before that, we were, our family was really farmers living off the land. Uh, they came over to the United States for opportunity. In Germany at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, land to be had at all. Uh, there's a lot of political turmoil, so the U.S. really was the land of opportunity. So they came over, they started, obviously, they uh, kept their family going and lived off the land. Uh, but my great-great-grandfather, John F. Neiman, who's pictured here, uh, he was the, um, he was an entrepreneur. So when uh, he got out of his uh, primary schooling, uh, he went to the Upper Peninsula in Michigan and started a logging company and a general store and... Um, uh, over the course of a few years, accumulated what today would be around $1.6 million, which he brought back into our, our community here in Wisconsin. Um, we're based out of Cedarburg, Mequon, Thienesville, uh, if anyone's curious. Uh, anyway, he started the first banks and canneries here in uh, multiple communities. So he used that money he made up in northern Michigan to really uh, help the communities uh, blossom here and, and have um, banks and places for people to work. Uh, so he really started setting up sort of that entrepreneurial spirit that uh, continues today. Uh, his son, my, my great-grandpa, Edwin Sr., actually ended up marrying Erna Fromm, who was the sister of the four Fromm brothers. And by that point, the Fromm brothers had been the largest fox farm in the world. And with that marriage, um, actually 12 pair of fox came with the marriage. <laughs> and uh, uh, that kicked off the, that industry down here in Mequon, Cedarburg, Thienesville. And um, let's see if I can pull up some more some more pictures here. You guys might like. Um, excuse me, while I'm scrolling through. Um, but fox, if I don't know if you know this or not, but foxes have similar nutritional needs that uh, that dogs have. So right. a very similar uh, as far as what they need, as far as protein, fat, uh, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals. So we had taken our Fox food. So we built a plant here in uh, Mequon, in 1925, and we were making our own fox food. Uh, we were doing that at scale, and we saw an opportunity that the dogs were eating this same food, and they looked amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually launched Neiman's Meteor Dog Food back in 1941, and it was a it was a uh, fresh frozen product, which uh, was fresh muscle meat, ground bone, skim milk, dried cornflakes, barley, wheat bran, ocean kelp brews yeast, ripe figs, carrots, and cod liver oil. And at the time, we're the only uh, pet food company uh, making uh, food for pets that uh, were producing food for our own use. So at that time period, the only dog food around was made by uh, pretty much breakfast cereal um, producers. They just saw an opportunity to kind of diversify and make a little extra money. For us, we had a vested interest in making sure the animals uh, looked, uh, looked awesome, they were healthy. And then at the end of the 40s, we uh, reached out to a guy by the name of Dr. Willard Roberts, uh, who had been working at Post Products and General Foods for over 10 years. He had several patents to his name. Uh, he actually had, holds the patent for um, grape nut flakes, which is still a popular breakfast cereal today. Right. Um, but he also was, a, was huge in animal research, uh, an animal lover. 
And the Fromm brothers uh, said, why don't you come on and help us out and try to uh, help us make a dry dog food. So uh, he did within a few years of um, feeding trials, actually the largest scale feeding trials in history ever done for a pet food. Um, we launched uh, Fromm Complete Dog Meal in 1949. Uh, so it was a huge, um, huge innovation as far as um, creating a complete and balanced diet for dogs. So people kind of just threw stuff together prior to that and the dogs ate it. But this was a large scale feeding trial that really tested different types of protein and fat um, mixtures against one another. And uh, we actually fed over 50,000 foxes and dogs these different formulas before we selected the final one that would become from Complete Dog Meal. Wow, that's pretty um, great. Yeah, so I'm talking a lot. And again, I, I could talk yeah. for hours on just the, on just well, the I history. The history I, but I think that's important. I mean, to to have a history of a company that goes back that far and and have all of that information about it, I think is fantastic. Um, you know, people, Nowadays, people want to know where their food comes from. They want mm -hmm. to know about transparency. They want to know, I think company history is important for all of us. I mean, it's it's the same for, for our business even. You know, where does, even though I'm from the art business, but where does my passion come from? Why why did I end up in the pet, pet space? So um, I think all this information is fantastic. Great. Um, so yeah, into the 1970s, um... We were doing pretty well. Obviously, we, we got out of the, the fox and ginseng business, and we kind of focused on uh, making high-quality pet food. And um, Doc Roberts ended up leaving for a little while, and he was uh, one of the major developers of, ex of high meat extrusion pet foods. So before the 1970s, there was uh, no pet food, really, that was made, extruded with fresh um, meat. It was, it was baked. And baking is baking's good, um, but baking, it's a lot easier to destroy precious nutrients within the kibble. Uh, you have to do it at a very high temperature and usually get more cook on the outside of the kibble than you do on the inside. Uh, so he developed the ability to do high meat extrusion of pet food in the 1970s. The first pet food available that utilized that was uh, Yukonuba, mm -hmm. um, but he brought that back to us when he came back into the back into the company. And when he came back is around the same time that my uh, my dad came back into the business. And I can show you a picture from around that time period. Let's see here. That's actually my dad's wedding photo. <laughs> um, so 1983, he, he, uh, my dad got a chemical engineering degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And... Uh, after that, they, he was working for 3M up in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, uh, well, actually, I was born then, but I was the only grandkid of 14 ever to meet my grandpa and my great-grandpa. So wow. pictured here is the four generations of us, um, my, who you saw earlier, uh, they're, they're younger pictures, but that's my grandpa and yeah. uh, my great-grandpa. Uh, but in 1985, uh, end of 84 and 85, they both passed away. This is my great-grandpa's uh, tombstone. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, there was no one uh, really that was a visionary here to take over the business. So it was essentially going to, uh, would have gone bankrupt, and this would all be history. From would have been history. So sure. my dad ended up quitting his job at 3M, uh, moving back to the Wisconsin area here, southeastern Wisconsin. And uh, my dad became Doc Roberts' understudy. So Doc had come back. He brought back uh, high meat exclusion extrusion. Uh, I'm sorry, high meat content extrusion into pet food in, for from. And he really was the pioneer of modern day pet food. Doc Roberts with those feeding trials he did back in the 1940s. Uh, pretty much all dog food today kind of stems from that. He was uh, good friends with Dr. Morris from Hills and Paul Imes. Uh, that whole time period where pet food. Uh, though as we know it today originated he was part of that that same group and one of the lead innovators so my dad uh, he had a chemical engineering background in school right so that allowed him to learn all the mechanical uh, uh, principles uh, as far as how you could extrude something um, and how the process can manipulate um, exactly uh, how digestible a product might be and um, and how to kind of do that part of it but Mm -hmm. the the nutrition part and how to put together a balanced diet for an animal uh doc roberts had uh years and years and years of study uh field experience education um 
he's a nutritionist. He was uh, an animal researcher. He knew the extrusion side. He pretty much knew everything. So my dad, when he got back, utilized his time to really learn everything he possibly could from Doc. Doc had been doing it uh, for decades. So my dad became his understudy, so essentially an apprentice for the next 15 years. And I was I was a young kid back then, right? So I was born in 83. My dad came back to run the business in um, 85. And from 85 until uh, about 2000 when Doc passed away, my dad... Uh, would spend would seem like every waking moment with Doc. Um, obviously, he's, he was a basketball coach for my brother and I, and uh, we do the family stuff. But honestly, a typical weekday, my dad wouldn't get home uh, till late in the evening, and it's because he's at he was at at the plant learning from Doc. Uh, Doc uh, obviously was around before computers, so he had all, everything on graph paper lined out and different formulas, and um, uh, so it really was working with him on a daily basis that my dad was able to learn uh, uh, pet food and nutrition. Um, so yeah, the, he, he holds a special place in my family's, my family's heart. And, uh, it's really not unlike what, uh, back in like 16th century Europe, where if you really wanted to learn a craft, you had to study under a uh, master craftsman or, um, same thing in the culinary arts. Uh, mm-hmm. there's things you can learn in school, but actually being able to be there with someone who's lived it, gone through it, gone through it, and really had to have them take them under your wing. Uh, was essential into driving this business into the next generation. And uh, with my dad being um, probably one of the most brilliant people in pet food uh, today. That's awesome. Yeah, so that that's kind of where, where it kind of brings us up sort of to today. Um, 2000, so my dad was able to launch, um, why was my brother being born? It's a fun one. <laughs> I, was, I, uh, I was eating well, it looks like, in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so my dad, uh, when Doc passed, uh, he actually launched From Gold in uh, 1999. So that was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of From Complete Dog Meal. Um, we called it Gold because the golden anniversary. And mm-hmm. uh, my dad was really, really started to have his own ideas at this point. And with Gold, uh, so Doc always had sort of uh, chicken based dog foods, which were very common throughout the 80s and 90s. But the fresh chicken is the first ingredient. You had organ meat. Um, high quality fats, uh, fantastic products. But people, I think, were looking for a little bit more variety out there as far as consumers, pet parents, uh, or maybe dogs. Uh, some of them have uh, sensitivities to certain types of proteins at times. So wanted to branch out. So my dad made adult gold, which incorporated fresh Wisconsin duck at the time. We had a, a duck renderer locally here that he was able to partner with. Um, he also uh, brought in probiotics for the first time. Uh, so probiotics really hit pet foods the end of the 90s, and uh, my dad thought that was great, uh, help uh, build the gut floor in the, in the dog and cat. So we added that into gold as well. And actually, till today, we've been using the same probiotics manufacturer that we started working with back in the 90s. Uh, they wow. do. Um, he's been, who we work with has been doing studies on different probiotics since, uh, well, they, they were in probiotics way before we met them. But when we started doing uh, probiotics for dogs and cats, it was really new. No one really knew what types of bacteria were going to work the best in a dog food or a cat food. So it's kind of like, well, we'll put in the mix that works uh, really well in people and we'll see what happens. And over the years, they've really fine-tuned exactly what works best in a dog and a cat. So I know some of the viewers out there are probably um, uh, expert label readers. So I don't know if over the years you've noticed our bacteria blend has changed a little bit. That's all based on ongoing research that we have uh, as far as what probiotics work mm-hmm. best in a, uh, for a dog and a cat. Um, I think sometimes too, the probiotics, I mean, they, they changes our environment changes as well. Like what, what is better and what mm-hmm. supports our immune system for today's needs too. So, I mean, everything ebbs and flows and changes. It's <clears throat> a great point. Uh, by 2003, my dad launched From Four Star. So when we talk about all those fun names and all the different colors, that was uh, our Four Star line. So uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, my dad would typically work into the evenings with Doc. And um, he'd come home and my mom would usually have his dinner nice and plated with some tinfoil <laughs> over it. And he'd go down. We'd all eaten because we, we'd eat at 5.30, 5.30 p.m. My mom's very orderly and it all happens at a certain time. Must be the generation. My mom's the same way. <laughs> yeah. So my dad would grab his dinner. He'd maybe reheat it if it needed to be reheated. Uh, otherwise, he'd head down to the basement and he'd throw on the Food Network. And that's where he got the inspiration for the Four Star Line, was just watching these world-class chefs uh, put together these these different entrees. And he thought, you know, 
Um, why do dogs and cats have to eat the same thing uh, every day? So he launched the, uh, the four-star line, so dogs and cats didn't have to eat the same thing every day. He took his, his, um, his background on nutrition and was able to apply that with different types of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, with the same sort of mix of macro and micronutrients, but able to swap out the, um, that center of the plate. Uh, so instead of chicken, maybe it's duck, maybe it's lamb, um, maybe it's salmon. And we started adding in fresh produce, so apples, cranberries, blueberries, cauliflower. Uh, our pork and peas has fresh melon, pineapple, um, all these different things to kind of add variety to the diet while um, giving the same blend of macro and micronutrients. Uh, so that was, that was pretty groundbreaking as well. So that's been going on since 2003. Uh, we launched with three products, and today in dog alone, we have 16 different options you can switch between on the dog side, uh, and that's just dry, then there's cans and treats. And on the cat side, there's nine different dry recipes and I think 11 or 12 different cans. And we've got, oh man, I think at least 12 different new can products that are currently under development that'll be hitting the market pretty soon. Um, so a lot going on. That kind of brings us up till today, I suppose, and the short version, <laughs> unless there's anything oh, else you want me to touch on. That's a great version. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that. There's, mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I think, and w w the one thing I, I appreciate about Froms, and I think our customers appreciate about Froms, is that you guys are innovative and you guys are always coming out with new options, new flavors, um, opportunity to try them as well, whether it's, you know, supporting a retail store like ourselves. You know, we have our free gift with deli local delivery right now from you guys. So I think that is something that keeps you guys on the forefront is people people that like protein rotation always have something new and different to try so um so i think that is fantastic company history is there in addition to what you just gave us is there something that you feel like sets froms apart that makes you guys different and awesome um not to i mean i think you guys are are have some different and awesome things whether it's the full line um I think something else that's really interesting that you can maybe touch on is that you guys have, you do all your own canned food, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people don't realize how that all works from an industry standpoint. A lot of people think because there's a label on it, people make their own food and that's not, that's not always the case either. So um, sure. you might have something, something that you want to talk about as well. Yeah. Let me throw up uh, some more information here, I guess. So yeah, we make our own products, which you're absolutely right. Uh, people a lot of times assume that the name on the product is is who made it, that they make it in some sort of manufacturing facility. Well, honestly, if you look at all the products on, on the market, I don't know what the split is, but there are potentially over half the products out there aren't made by the, the label that says is making it. So with us, we have our own we have our own manufacturing facilities. So this is our uh, the Yellow Star is our Mequon facility. That's the original plant we built in 1925. Still does about 10 percent of our overall production. Uh, it's also where our R&D lab is. It's where my dad works every day. He's about 400 feet from research and development. Um, and he, he's, like I said, lived there since 1985. Uh, so that's like his home base. So a lot of the company still re revolves around that original manufacturing facility. Um, he actually, and, and he, goes, he goes to work seven days a week. Um, and in the winter, he still has a plow on his truck to make sure that there's no Wisconsin snowstorm that's going to stop him from getting into his office. And then he'll clean up the, he'll do the, he'll do our maintenance people's job typically then too, and plow <laughs> part of the driveway. Um, just because he, he took this company from essentially about to go under when my grandparents passed away to now we are uh, one of the top pet foods in, uh, in neighborhood pet stores. So pretty amazing. So he still does stuff that he probably shouldn't have to do anymore, but he doesn't know totally, any other I way. Totally know that. <laughs> the owner. Let me, let me get out there and clean, clean out, yeah. the, clean out the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's where my dad is in any given day. Um, Columbus is a production facility we opened in 2010. Uh, we revived an old um, an old an old feed place, uh, Grain Tower, in uh, it's near Madison, Wisconsin. And today that accounts for 90 the other 90 percent of our dry food production. And it is a beautiful facility, state of the art, um, just incredible. Uh, we brought on a guy by the name of Richard Best. Uh, who had been president of KT Foods and had been on, in other areas of um, of animal food companies as well, and he really um, 
built that from, well, not built it from the ground up. We, we uh, took an old facility and renovated it. But he took something that had been pretty much mothballed for, for years and gutted it. And we turned it into um, probably the most advanced pet food facility in the world. Uh, we do our own uh, raw meat and veggies and cheese. All of that's done on site, uh, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal. And then, like you mentioned, in 2015, we opened Eden. Uh, that's our canned food production facility. We actually leaned on a, um, a human foods uh, uh, canning company. So we had been out of canning ourselves since uh, at least the 1970s, so before my dad came back. So we had, we had food that was co-packed since then from the 1970s through um, when we opened the cannery in 2015. And we had some really good products, but honestly... Uh, the way my family is, it's we want to do it ourselves and we want to make the best product that we possibly can. So we knew at some point we had to bring it back in-house. And we were able to do that in 2015 with the help of um, Lakeside Foods. So they had, a, they had a, a plant that hadn't been in operation for a while. And they also have the know-how on how to do canning. Uh, they're, uh, we're a 116-year-old family business. Uh, they date back to the 1800s. So uh, you might think like we're, we're an old company, but there's plenty more family businesses out there that uh, even uh, well predate us. Uh, actually, my family and I are, are huge craft beer connoisseurs. And uh, I love looking back at some of those old German breweries, which date back to like 1300. Um, so it's pretty cool once you got a good thing going and, and what that instills in the family moving forward as far as quality and uh, making sure that you're making the best thing you possibly can. So we did that again with canning in 2015. Uh, we first started duplicating the um, products we already had, which was just a handful. And now today, uh, I think we've got at least uh, 40 different products out there between dogs and cat. And there's a, oh God, there's got to be at least 20 in research and development right now. It takes a long time to develop a product. Uh, we got to put it together. We do feeding trials and uh, we got to put everything through its paces to make sure that we're comfortable putting our family name on it. Um, but it, it's fun and, uh, Eden, like you said, a lot of, a lot of foods are co-packed and, um, today, at least at Eden, everything that comes out of that cannery has the from, has the from name on it. Uh, we don't co-pack for anybody else at that facility. That's awesome. So I'm hearing possibly 20 new flavors coming out. Is that what Yeah, I, I, not all at once. <laughs> uh, I don't want to overwhelm you, but, uh, yeah, people like variety. Uh, with yeah. the cat food right now, it's uh, all pate foods. Uh, on the dog side, we have this beautiful shredded, uh, shredded meat product, which honestly, there's there's probably double or triple more meat in that can than you'll find in a, a can of Campbell's Chunky Soup. It is pretty. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful product. So we're we're working on the shredded the shredded foods for cats. Uh, we just launched stews for dogs. Uh, those yeah. are also awesome products. And from from Belaya, we just launched that. So we're working on a similar thing for cats as, as well. People and, will be um, very excited for cats. Yeah, we got a, we have a lot going on right now. Uh, it's been fun to watch the team grow. So we've got some incredible minds here. Um, for a while, I was like my dad was the mastermind of of all the products, right? And mm -hmm. uh, we had we had our team of veterinarians and whatnot, and uh, people that would do feeding trials for us. But today, uh, we've got some excellent people in R and D. Um, actually, one guy's one of my really good friends, Greg. I met through a homebrew club here in Cedarburg. And uh, he, he kind of runs that, um, our R&D department now, obviously right alongside my dad. But uh, yeah. it's been really fun watching that come together and, and just seeing what ideas people come up with. And it's really been able to uh, fast track a lot of these uh, great ideas that we've had for years, just haven't had the ability to do so. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Hamburg, uh, we don't have a facility there, which you kind of do. We that's where the original family farm was. So when we immigrated from Germany, uh, we settled in, um, actually, we settled down here in southeastern Wisconsin, but the Fromm Brothers farm was up in northern Wisconsin. Their dad used the Homestead Act that Abraham Lincoln passed to move up there and get mm -hmm. some land and start a, start their farm. Um, but we just brought that original farm back. So that's where, the again, the, the whole ginseng and fox business started. Uh, yeah. Today, we have a farm there where we have uh, chickens and cows and pigs, and uh, we tap maple trees for syrup. So that's all probably the extra stuff running probably just recently here. Um, so one of my best friends that I grew up with uh, runs that farm for us up there with his wife and three kids. Uh, so that's pretty special for us, too. And then wow. in Germantown, we have uh, a treat facility. So... Uh, we extrude the treats in Mequon, and then we bring them over to Germantown to do different coatings and uh, to package them up and, and send them out. So, yeah, we're all we're all hands on. 
Uh, we try to produce everything we possibly can. The, the Actually, the only things we do not produce that have the Fromm name on them are our baked treats because we don't have a, a, uh, a baking production line. But we, we utilize another Wisconsin business to do those for us, too. So uh, cool. it's it's pretty great. Yeah. Well, I think that definitely makes you guys unique, different, and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then inside the plant, uh, <laughs> let's see. So I'm just pulling up some slides from different yeah, presentations I've done over the years. Of course. Um, but yeah, what makes us special, what I like to tell people, it kind of boils down into four different areas. Uh, premium ingredients, meticulous preparation, uncompromising safety, and dedicated people. And I don't think any one of those is more important than another. Um, our ingredients were on the same local delivery routes as the local grocery stores for our fresh produce. Uh, we get in um, fresh meat blocks uh, on a daily basis. Daily basis, we're getting in uh, beef and pork, salmon. Uh, we do. We can debone our own fish right here on site. Um, we make our own. Like I said, we make our own slurries. Typically, the pet food manufacturer, you hire a meat company to make your slurry for you. So they take all this, they ground all this up for you. And um, they deliver it to you in a big tote, and you kind of send it over to the extruder. For us, we want to have total control. So we want to see what that meat looks like before it's going in into the product. Uh, that means we can see whole organ meat uh, that will actually cook, grind up. It'll get uh, ground in a, in, a, in a split second. Um, we make our own paladins. Um, that's something that is incredibly important in pet food. The palatin goes on the outside of the kibble. It's what really entices the dog or cat to eat it. Uh, we do that by, uh, um, a, a very meticulously timed process that starts to actually do enzymatic digestion on the product. And that's what releases those flavors that dogs and cats go wild over. Uh, typically pet food companies will buy that as a palatin. So they'll buy that as a powder. They kind of add water and it goes on the outside of the, the kibble and the dogs and cats love it. For us, we make that from scratch here with, uh, with meat. And um, we add in Wisconsin cheese. Uh, being, the great thing about being in Wisconsin is we're surrounded by just an incredible uh, food, food industry. So we've got... Uh, access to high quality proteins, uh, great produce, great high quality whole grains, and then we're the cheese capital of the world. So we get in these giant blocks of cheddar and mozzarella, and that goes right into that digest. And if you ever wonder why Fromm feeds so great, it's because that this stuff is being made in our, um, in our facility. Uh, this is our extruder pictured here. Um, we actually utilize a hands-on process that is totally unique in the pet food industry. So this is something developed by Doc Roberts. Back in uh, when we started doing extrusion in pet food, so late 70s, early 80s, uh, you could only get these manually operated extruders where you're pretty much doing hand adjustments and everything and you're sending over uh, different types of blends. So you got your fat blend, you've got your protein blend, you got your dry mix that you're putting into the extruder and it's all kind of a hands-on process. Well, as computers came along and sort of automated things, pet food facilities utilized that and they, they put in sensors to determine uh, how uh, to, to pull different areas and make adjustments on the extruder. That works That works pretty good. Uh, it gets you most of the way there. But for us, we still today do a hands-on extrusion process where we were looking at here, these are steam injectors on the side of the extruder. And you're seeing one of our extruder operators making minute adjustments to exactly how much steam's getting injected and at which point in the barrel of the extruder. Uh, we do that, and then at the end, we pull the product off, and we're looking for specific attributes of that kibble. So you can see here, that's my dad pulling apart a kibble. We're looking for starch gelatinization. So we want to make sure that we get a full cook on the carbohydrates that are inside that, that kibble. The, the better the cook, the more digestible the kibble is going to be. So you can undercook it, and you can overcook it. Both of those are going to be um, going to create uh, different uh, nutrients within the kibble. They're going to be useless to the animal because it's either in a state where it's too hard for the body to process or it's been overcooked and you've destroyed any nutrients that were there. So here's where we can dial that in. We'll actually take it from here. You put it in your mouth. You look for a specific amount of sponginess within that kibble. And then from there, you're going to make different adjustments uh, throughout that extrusion process. And um, like I said, uh, using computers and sensors to do that, I mean, it does a pretty good job. It also allows you to do what's called a, um, uh, a low-cost a low model 
where the computer actually knows how much you bought barley for and knows how much you bought chicken for and it can actually optimize the food in order to make it at the lowest cost yet meet minimums as far as what you're looking for for a nutrient analysis. Well, with Fromm, we don't even have the ability to do that because we're using uh, this manual process for extrusion. And our uh, extruder operators, uh, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of pride that comes with being a Fromm extruder operator because you're learning this stuff and there's a lot to learn and you have to understand what's going on uh, in the process in order to make, make it so it comes off the end to uh, our quality standards. And my brother's down there on a daily basis, Richard, and here in the Mech one side, my dad's down there always doing these QC checks to make sure that they're making product that uh, meets the standards that Doc would have um, expected back when, when he was still alive. So that's something that makes us incredibly unique, uh, the fact that we're doing this manual extrusion process. Uh, we've been told by an extruder manufacturer, not only are we the only pet food company they sell these manually operated extruders to, uh, we're one of the only companies still left in the world that are buying these manually operated extruders because everything's pretty much got in the automated way. Right. It's how, how cheap can we make it? How fast can we make it? and uh, just get it out there. For us, it's still about the quality. It's still about taking our time with it and being proud about putting our family name on our product. That's going to feed incredibly well for animals. That's awesome. That's that's. I mean, I agree with you. There's so many um, trades and it sounds like the that is a trade and a skill that comes with working at Fromm's and understanding the food manufacturing portion of it that sometimes those get lost in like AI and automation and Sometimes it's it, what it's what makes it best. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I think so. It's what I mean. It's what uh, I mean. As a kid, I never thought of going into pet food. I mean, it, it was what my dad did, right? Right. But as you start to learn about the the passion and what's going on in the product and seeing the results, like that's what really drives me personally. Mm -hmm. Is is just this is this works and you can see it that you put all this time and love into something and actually seeing it make a difference. From the animal side, the, the dogs and cats, they look amazing. They got bright eyes, shiny coats. They got tons of energy. And then from just the local impact, what we're doing for communities, which are helping these local businesses stay afloat by offering a product that's unique and can make an impact on people's mm -hmm. lives. Like That's what drives me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, that's it's pretty cool. I love it. Um, <clears throat> any other information to share on that? Or are we ready for ready to go on to the next question? Oh, I got I got all kinds of stuff. I, okay. I, I don't know what everyone else is doing. <laughs> well, go, I think go. everyone's stuck at home, right? So maybe this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Or or at least you're humoring me. <laughs> yeah. No, I think so. This is great information. I and you know, this is some of the things that people don't always get to hear. You know, they come into the pet store and they, you know, they talk to us, which is is information that we get from you guys and then we reiterate it, but it's it's coming straight from you. So I love sure. it. Let's keep going. Yeah, I guess on the safety side. So uh, I think it's pretty interesting. So we have an auto sampler. This is a picture uh, over by our packaging line. So it's come off the extruder. Uh, they, then from the extruder goes into what's called the dryer. And the dryer, um, it's essentially an oven, but we don't call it an oven because it's not baking. All you're doing is removing moisture from the, the extruded product. The extrusion process is only a few minutes long. Uh, so it's at relatively lower temperatures when you look at baking. And it's for a much shorter period of time. So that's that's where we're able to create that incredible digestibility in an extruded product. So we'll go in the dryer. The dryer will remove moisture out of it so we can get it down into a shelf-stable product that's not going to spoil. And uh, from there, it heads over to packaging. And in packaging, we have these auto samplers that take a couple kibbles at a time uh, between bags, fills up this um, this sample bag. And by the end of that, that, uh, that packaging run, we'll have a full bag of kibble. And this will send off to an accredited lab down in Illinois, and they're going to check for pathogenic bacteria, uh, foodborne um, things that could that could enter into the the product. And they're going to they're going to look at that composite sample, which is pretty much a snapshot of that entire um, packaging run, and they're going to test it. And it's not until we hear back from them; it's usually about 48 hour period uh, that that product is clear. Then that we allow that product to go out into distribution. Uh, that's kind of the final quality track. We have quality checks throughout the process, though. So th throughout the process, we have infra spectrometers looking for things like protein, fat, content, ash content, uh, moisture content, and uh, that kind of tracks it that way. At the beginning of the process, um, we have a, uh, a, Q, a, a quality control lab at, the, at raw ingredients uh, receiving, 
And before we even allow truckers to unload raw ingredients, we go out, we stab it with a sampler, bring it back to our lab. We have a wet lab on site. We can do the infrastructurometer if we're looking for things. But honestly, our number one test for discovering issues is the smell test and the site test. We're actually just looking at it, looking for anything that might be awry. Um, as far as uh, what we receive, so um, you're a trucker that shows up with a, a load of raw ingredients. We need to see that your the bed of your truck, if it's a if it's a, a truck that actually holds just a, a enormous amount of a um, of a different type of ingredient in in the hull, uh, we have to see that you cleaned out that truck. So we have to see proof from the truck wash that you did that. We also want to know where you came from. We have a whole laundry list of things that could never have been um, transported on that truck before. Um, and then as far as what companies we get raw ingredients from, they have to go through our approved supplier program. So they have to pass, uh, through a bunch of different, uh, tests that we, we, we put, uh, them through. Uh, so we'll go out, we'll visit the facility. Uh, we need to see a certificate of analysis. We need to see certificate of origins. So we need to know exactly where, uh, if it's beef or chicken, exactly what farm it was raised on. Um, and, uh, we look at a lot of different areas there. So that, that's uh, part of the safety. We have uh, actually HEPA air filtering in our, our production facility that pushes uh, air that makes sure that nothing from the raw ingredient side of our facility can pass through into the finished goods side. We have separate entrances for our employees that are on the raw side and that are on the finished goods side. Uh, we do these things not because uh, we've been told to by the USDA or FDA. These are just the right things to do to make a safe product. Um, so, of course, we're inspected by the FDA, the USDA, AFIS. Um, uh, they, they do a great job, but honestly, there's so much more you can do from a food safety standpoint that, uh, we're always trying to come up with, uh, what's the next thing we can do to make sure that we don't have any type of foodborne Ill illness here. That's going to, that's going to leave the plant and how can we make the safest, most high quality product possible? That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and honestly, our number one selling point, I think is that we're fifth generation family owned and operated. Uh, I think a lot of our, us here gets, get, it's like, oh, everybody already knows that. I don't know that everyone out there listening to this today knows that, but we're family owned and operated. The company is completely uh, within the family. And uh, my grandma actually picked her, picked her down here on the bottom. Uh, she's uh, 90 years old. And if it wasn't for this COVID-19 thing, uh, she was still coming into work two days a week. Wow. And uh, doing our, <laughs> yeah, uh, she handles our frequent buyer program that we have at some retailers where they have an envelope that they send them with UPCs. Yeah. And she would, she counts them to make sure you're giving away the right product. And, you know, she's got her list of stores that, that uh, are sending in some things they should have thought about sending in. And she's, she knows, actually, it's mostly just a naughty list, I think. <laughs> Anyway, hey, Graham has a naughty list. Yeah, her and I used to share an office um, <laughs> when she'd come in when she was working three days a week. So this is a while back, uh, and I was working out of the Mequon facility then. And not only was she counting them and doing all that stuff, but if someone was sloppy cutting out the UPC, she'd actually take her scissors and make and cut it out in a perfect rectangle, and then she'd throw it away. So I said, Grandma, you throw these away. Why do you do that? She said, oh, I just hate how sloppy some people are. <laughs> So I think that's that's that German blood that we're always striving for perfection, even if it's just a UPC that's getting sent in. Um, but yeah, just a great team. And the bottom right there, that's George Johnson. He's our director of sales. He's been with us since my dad came back. So he's been with us since 1985, and um, just an incredible team. Uh, we talk uh, we on the website and whatnot. We talk a lot. There's bios on me and my brother and my family. Uh, but what doesn't get r its credit is just the fantastic team that we have. Yeah. Uh, that we've that we've built over the years that none of this would be possible without them there's no way that we could produce as much product as we do and be able to feed so many families and support so many communities if it wasn't for just this fantastic team um that we put together yeah that's awesome i mean even i think our i mean manny was our original sales rep he's still with you guys and we've yeah carried froms for 14 14 or 15 years now so yeah definitely people like working for froms yeah, it's and once you get in, it can't get out. It's <laughs> typically what's going on around here. I don't think we'd let we wouldn't let Manny leave. I mean, unless he's going to retire, but 
<laughs> then my dad said, well, I'm not retiring. And hey, George is still working here. There's no way you could retire if George and is don't still working. don't get me wrong. Paul, Paul's <laughs> yeah, we love Paul, but the two of them. Yeah, Paul is, uh, I have a is lot of Nanny's little that. Lebanese brother. So those two, they get... <laughs> People out in the market actually confuse those two because they both they're both um, about the same height. They both have mustaches, and so uh, Manny used to cover. Uh, he was kind of the primary sales rep in the company for a while, and then we had to split his territory, and right. we brought in Paul. And people got confused, thinking, "Oh, Manny just got a haircut," and no, it's it's the new guy, Paul. But Paul's done a fantastic job stepping up, and uh, yeah. him and I joke and. Yeah. I I could go on and on about our team. They're just they're just great great people. Hearts yeah. of gold. Yeah, good. Um, all right, what do we have up next here for us? It looks like you're showing some beef livatini. Oh, that's just a homepage. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. There anything specific you want to talk about? Uh, throw it at me. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going through some of the questions I have for you. So, is there by chance? I know you have some pets at home. Or maybe it's a product that you've been proud of, but is do you have a favorite product? I know you guys have lots of SKUs, so that might be hard to pick one one favorite product, but you might have something. My favorite product, uh, probably the 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 adult gold. That's the black bag. It's our number one product in the company. It's that like I mentioned earlier that my it was kind of my dad's first big product development on his own. Uh, mm -hmm. It has just been a fantastic product for what going on uh, twenty, I don't know, over twenty years now. Um, it just performs flawlessly, and yeah, we have a lot of dogs that do really well on on Franz Gold. We have um, just for our community, so we actually feed nine police dogs um, throughout our area, um, and we do have a couple dogs that are on Franz Gold, and then the. Um, Grim, who is for Madison Heights, the city that we're in, he's been eating the Fromm's chicken a la veg and coat is super shiny. He's been doing wonderful. Owner says that um, stools are great, hasn't had any issues with it. And yeah, that's I would say that's a fan favorite around our store as well. Yeah, so. cool. Yeah, chicken a la veg is one of those first three four star recipes from yeah. 2003. Yeah. 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 For me, just looking back is like, man, this product just every day is doing its job and animals yeah. are doing great on it. And you know, we have a lot of canine units around here, too, on that adult gold food. My dog, I have a 12 year old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. She's on the adult gold right right now. But, you know, I'd, I kind of bring bring back whatever we kind of got. Uh, leftover from different samples and whatnot in the office, right? Of so, <laughs> so she's she's a taste tester for new products. She gets uh, the product that I have left over from sampling, and uh, she looks great, right? She's that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, Kingston. I think Kingston's currently. It's our cat. He's on the uh, Haas and Duck and Pfeffer cat food right now, and doing good too. Good. Good. Um, any trends that you're seeing within the pet industry or within your vertical sure. that you might want to share with us? Yeah, there's all kinds of trends, okay? Um, there was a huge shift from grain-free foods back to grain-in foods. Uh, that started kind of last summer uh, with some different news headlines and things that were out there, some different mm -hmm. tests and trying to dig into um, uh, DCM in, in dogs and cats. Uh, which there hasn't been any clear um, studies out for exactly what causes that, but it really changed the landscape of pet food. And man, I got to give it to my dad. He, in what he knew about animal nutrition, and everything he knew from the get go that you know there's there's not a specific nutritional need to go grain free for animals, but hey, uh, pet parents are really looking for it. So um, we didn't just jump the mark with a grain free food cause he had to understand it first. It took, um, several years and research and development before we actually came out with one. Um, and we have the, the best grain free foods on the market today. And, uh, he said, you know, this is, this has all been cyclical. I've been through all of this, my whole career. There's always been these different fads in pet food and they always seem to come around. So I always knew I learned from my dad that, yeah, that someday the grain free thing is kind of going to reverse course. We never thought it was going to happen like it did which people sure. just stopped feeding it right away because they were worried. Yeah. And um, honestly, it, people should do whatever makes them feel most comfortable. Um, but we were here the whole time with with both types of products, Four Star. You could hardly even tell what was grain-free or grain-in based on the packaging because it never really was the hallmark of the product. It was always about the quality of the product. It was always about variety. Right. So um, we've seen this huge shift back to the grain-in products. 
Um, luckily, we already had the green in products. We had from customers. Oh, yeah, I've been reading something in the news, and maybe I'll try the adult gold because that that's, has whole grains in it. But sure. honestly, all the products are still performing excellent. And that, that's been a huge shift as far as that's concerned with the with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we've seen a big shift to people. Uh, first, they bought a ton of products. So we're like running as much pet food as we possibly could. And I'm sure right. you at your store have had um, mm-hmm. some record some record sales weeks uh, when the yeah. pandemic started. Yeah. Um, and then now we've been seeing uh, it kind of tapered off a little bit. We're seeing a huge drive to buy online. So there's buy online, pick up in store. Uh, making sure these local pet stores who always knew that online was important are really finally seeing, oh, I have to have online, especially if, if it's possible to go through another one of these pandemics again. You've got to be able to give the convenience that people are looking for. So they're not going to turn to an Amazon or a Walmart.com to try to buy their pet food that they know they can continue to support their local business, but also have the convenience of buying online. So I think that's been a, a good a good outcome of the pandemic is uh, is really these lo- our local neighborhood pet stores really figuring out that they need some of this technology, and sure. I think everyone's going to be better for it. And in the long run, um, we're going to have it's going to be easier to support your local retailer. Yeah, and and we've seen the shift too. We've seen um, it being small, we're able to make more changes quickly about curbside and figuring out. <clears throat> new ways to do to do business and making sure pet parents have pet food without um without them having to rely on on big box or some of these companies are 14 days out on on delivering food with third-party carriers where we already have it in stock and we can mm-hmm. get it the same day so so yeah that's i would say we've seen some of that that here well as well with the with the pandemic it's it's been interesting but it's been interesting yeah you know, it's been strong. interesting and you yeah, guys are still in full production then for yes. all food. So no, and we've been getting food from all of our distributors and haven't really had, I mean, we've been hearing it across the board that most of the manufacturers are in full production and um, have supplies to make to make cat and dog food and there's no issues there. So yeah, not, knock on wood, no, no issues at the current time. Obviously this whole situation is fluid, but uh, yeah, we've diver- we've diversified our suppliers. We've done that a long time. We've got great contacts. We uh, we don't we're never looking for the low cost option. Um, it's always it's nurturing relationships. The suppliers know that uh, that we're looking for quality, consistency, sustainability, and uh, it's those types of relationships that are able to help us weather things like this. That it's always somebody that's looking to to do good by you. Uh, this wasn't just oh just some contract you set up to make it cheap and easy and 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 uh, be able to produce something uh, economically. It's it's so. Oh, how can we do it economically, but sustainably and at an incredibly high quality? Yeah, fantastic. Um, any insider input on how small businesses and retailers like the Pet Bistro um, help with the Fram's family food, and how our relationship together it only makes the pet industry stronger? I would tell you we would not exist without the neighborhood <laughs> retailer. Yeah, we are a grassroots brand. Um, it's com- it's one person to another person. It's seeing one pet's doing well on a food. The types of things that just don't work in a national advertising campaign is what makes our products unique. And there's no way that we could have built our company with the products that we have without the neighborhood retailers. So thank you for that. Um, we sell through over 6,000 retailers in North America, and we do not sell in a single Petco, PetSmart, Walmart, Target, Kroger, uh, you name it. We are only at neighborhood pet stores. So they've built us. We are uh, we value that relationship so much, and we know that they're always gonna. It's always gonna be your local retailer that's gonna be able to look at your individual dog and utilize their experience from from knowing that community and and knowing. Um, how to run a business that are really the types of people that you want to learn from and get product recommendations from. So it's, what's our relationship like? It, I think we wouldn't be here without you. That's, well, that's I think really how, how we feel. As well, thank you, yeah. to you guys for supporting Neighborhood and allowing us to carry a brand that we can eloquently speak about when people come in and they have pets with issues. And we know you guys have are are back as well when we go to suggest a Fromm's product. So it, kudos to you guys and thank you as well in, in return. 
Um, <clears throat> all right, any new products coming out? So I know we talked yeah. about Malaya can here um, a quick second ago. So this is our newest. Yeah, I should pull up a pic. I do have a picture of that, I think okay. I can show you. Perfect. Uh, give me a second here. We did put them on the website. So we had a big yeah. product launch kind of ready to go. Um, but then the pandemic hit and everyone was just trying to get their regular dry food that um, we didn't get this launched how we wanted to. So we're going to do another big push with the retailers here, I think, in July um, oh, to you. get it out there. But it, it is available and you have it in stock. So it's certainly uh, head down to the Pet Bistro and pick up a can. But this is what it looks like. Uh, so this is the can. Obviously, we soaked up a little bit of the gravy to take the picture. But uh, yeah, fantastic product. Uh, that's our stew product. That one just came out. We're working on a similar product for cats. Uh, we're also doing the shredded product for cats, which again, I can't show you because it's not out there yet, but I can show you what the uh, the shredded dog food looks like. If I go to our website here and uh, go to our canned food for dogs, check out this shredded beef. So this, this picture we took out, um, we work with a fantastic food photographer here in Milwaukee, uh, Jenna Carlin and... Um, and her team. Um, but this is our this is our shredded product. And that again is what's in the can. We soaked up a little bit of the gravy, but there is that much meat in that can with the with the veggies. Yeah. And when I had when when I had dogs, um, we had fed some of the Fromm's cans and they're pretty meaty. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. Um so Frambalaya. It, it remind me again is it five flavors it's five flavors it's right? five flavors currently but we have it obviously the ability to add on different flavors as we go on we have our lamb uh lamb and vegetable uh we've got a pork and vegetable a turkey and vegetable a beef and then the chicken which i had up before fantastic yeah that's what i thought it was the five flavors so we're excited to get that out so that is um we started last wednesday um uh, with froms so from dog and anyone who orders local delivery will get uh some free cans both dog and cat and we got the frambalaya in with our uh local delivery last week from our distributor so we started adding that into the mix so some of our, our customers if they place an order so today and tomorrow is the last day for our froms free gift so anyone who's watching if you have placed an order for local delivery um, you'll be getting some of the Fromm's items. Plus, we do have samples of dry food that we have been adding to all of our deliveries, whether it's um, local delivery or third party. So we also ship out USBS and FedEx. Um, so everyone's been getting a little bit of Fromm's love this week. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. It's a great deal. Yeah. Um, so it looks like we have, just to wrap up here, we do have a couple comments from some folks. So Diane, it looks like Diane was joining us this morning. She says, good morning. Dolly says that she loves Fromm's. And on the next one here, she has a little bit more in-depth question for us. Um, she's asking if we can comment on the best food for CHF. I'm going with that is chronic heart failure. And a five-year-old cat, he was rushed to the ER on Friday in distress. Oh, my God. First of all, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, wow, Especially I can't, in these can't times, imagine. that's tough. Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, there, there's not a single food that I could recommend without knowing more about it. And typically, uh, heart failure, um, if it was diet related, it would have been something that already occurred. And there's not any uh, magic food that would, would kind of fix that. But we'd want to know is kind of the background on the, the animal. Um, we'd want to get you in, with, in touch with one of our on-staff veterinarians that can kind of learn more about uh, what, what led up to this. Mm -hmm. And then um, what a lot of times we'll do is we'll have our veterinarian talk to your veterinarian, if that's OK with you, and uh, kind of get everybody on the same page. And we can start talking about what things we might be able to do with diet. Um, but unfortunately, there's, there's not a simple answer. Every every one of these um, um, catastrophic events, there's something that led up to it, whether it's diet related, whether it's not. And it does take a lot of digging and time uh, to kind of figure out where to go. But please give us a call. Um, Danielle, our nutritionist, our head of customer service is fantastic. And uh, again, we've got a team of veterinarians as well that we can we can get on get on the case and uh, we'll hold your hand the, the whole way through it. So I can't speak more about my team is there it's every every single dog or cat out there uh, is special and we will uh, as long as you'll have us we will be there to help. 
And real quick, Brian, can you just toss out the uh, phone number for Franz that she can call? Sure. I think it's 1-800-325-6331. Perfect. And she can find that on the website as well. Yeah, on the website too. And you can okay. email on the website. We have live chat on the website. Um, okay. Honestly, though, if you're going to be doing talking to our veterinarian, uh, what happens is uh, we'll actually get you, uh, you'll actually talk to them. So they'll give you a call and talk to you. Uh, we find out that just works best um, sure. as opposed to throwing Absolutely. them in, in live chat. But you can start on live chat or start on phone or start on email, and then we'll get that set up and get you in touch with the right people here. Fantastic. Great information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Carol says that her dogs love the Fromm's canned food. It's the only thing they want to eat. <laughs> yeah, we get that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jen says she just switched to Fromm's for her special diet pup. It's been working great. So awesome. Great news. And then Sean is telling us that everything that we've said today is very informing, informative and great. he appreciates what we've been doing here. So thank you, Sean. Sean has three pups, so he's got, he's got a full household. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So anything that you think we've missed today that we need to do review before before we... I think we talked a while. We have to go into another session. <laughs> I, I I could talk forever, especially now I'm stuck stuck at home. Um, well, there's that, and then I, you know, it's just like myself. You know, you have passion for the business, and you understand the ins and outs, and all the different processes and things yeah. that go along with it. And you know, it's it's easy to talk all day long about a topic or. And something. there's there's so much to talk about. A, a lot of it seems like companies out there try to distill things down into a couple bullet points or talking points or it has a, some food has a magic ingredient. Right. I can tell you there is no magic ingredient in pet foods. Uh, it is completely about the quality of the ingredients, how it's prepared, the process in which it's put together. It's what are you doing as far as safety and who's making your food? Do they have a vested interest in making sure that they're trying to do something right, right by you and right by your animal? So uh, I'm so glad to see people still still here an hour in. Uh, that's pretty cool. I yeah. can really tell that they tell about they care about their pets, and I want to yeah. I want to let everybody know out there that uh, we do too, and we're going to continue remaining family owned, family operated, and making the product in the same hands on manner that that we always have. So I think that's something that makes us unique, and I think uh, you understand it. You've allowed me to yeah. talk about it here for a bit, and we. We'd love to hear from people, so please give us a call. We can answer. No question is is taboo or anything like that. If you heard something, oh, I heard this from my friend. It sounds a bit fishy, or I heard about this or that. We can kind of talk you through where that might have come from, what the what the facts are, and where to look for more information, and hold your hand through that. So please, please reach out. Perfect. So I am so grateful for your time today. I appreciate you. Um, well, maybe the pandemic pandemic has put us in this place that we've been able to yeah. connect and um, tell people more about your brand. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And, and maybe we'll have an, another interview coming up shortly. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I'll be around. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Take care, everybody.